$8.54 for a pound of sirloin. <laughs> you guys, those miners used to eat well. That's the stuff they say going to these pasties, right? So they're gonna be trying to make for the first time Cornish pasties. You're watching The Bear Pantry Show. Welcome to The Bear Pantry Show. If you wanna learn how to cook in simple steps and have your dishes come out great the first time, then you're in the right place. Learn to make restaurant style meals, comfort foods, and authentic Belizean dishes from basic ingredients. All right, I got Joe with me because he's already fighting. Why? Because um, I, I'm just asking if you go put uh, seeds like uh, ricotta in this thing, paprika. I was just going to put salt, black pepper, and some cayenne because that's what I see most people put in their videos. But we're Belizean and we Belizeanize everything, so we're going to put what we want. If you were from the UK and you say you don't make it like that, don't drag us, please. We try. So first of all, let me tell you about the dough. I'm going to tell you and tell Joe about the dough. This is my Belizean dough, my Belizean pie dough where I always put four cups of all-purpose flour, three quarter cups of butter, three quarter cups of shortening. Should be lard, but I don't cook with lard. And then I don't put any salt because the butter is salted and then ice cold water. And I make it into a dough and it's a very elastic -y dough, all right? So I guess this is not really like a pie dough pie dough. This is like a rough dough from what I've been learning. So then I watched somebody else, Chef John, and he had a similar recipe except he put less he put lard. He put less lard and less butter than I do with mine. I think it's like four tablespoons of butter, which uh, two tablespoons of butter is a quarter of a cup. Okay. No, an eighth. Two tablespoons is, is an eighth, so four is a quarter of a cup. So I put three fourths of a cup. He puts a quarter of the butter, and then he put like six tablespoons of the lard. Mm -hmm. I, I did shortening. I didn't put any salt again because the butter is salted. So I'm gonna see which one of these doughs hold up better. I also have another dough because I messed up. I was on the phone and I was trying Chef John's stuff and I didn't measure out four cups of flour, I measured out two and I put the same fat he put and I'm not gonna throw it away. We're gonna see what comes out. So I have some potatoes here diced up and I'm soaking it in water so it doesn't get reddish but it's still doing that. And I have some that I slice very thin using a mandolin slicer and I cut it up into like four or five pieces. So they're very thin, see? Thin slices of potato. Now, the thing that shocked me about this recipe, Joe, this came from Jasmine from the UK. Jasmine, hey! Jasmine's my friend that sent me the box of goodies mm -hmm. and the, the, the um, gold spoon set stuff. And she sent me this recipe and I've been watching it every night. You know, when I got sick again on New Year's Eve, I watch this thing every night and drool because I want to make this. So Joe went to the store, to Walmart, and bought sirloin. I can't even say a word. <laughs> They say, I have to use, they say I have to use rump skirt steak or something. I chopped, I washed it with some vinegar. I don't know if the English people do that. I washed it with some vinegar, chopped it up into small pieces. I put a piece aside for you if you want to make something because this thing too expensive. So what we're going to do is season this up with some salt, black pepper, cayenne. I'm not going to put onion powder and garlic powder only because that stuff affects my stomach, but you could do that and some ricotta. That's how we're going to put on it. And then we're going to start making this stuff off. All right, so let me go ahead and season this stuff up. So I'm gonna hit it with some salt. And what I usually do is put salt, pepper, and cayenne, and then kind of stir it up and then put more salt, pepper, cayenne, okay? So I'm putting more salt right here. That's how you know you have enough salt. So now I'm seasoning the potatoes. Normally I wouldn't do this if I was mixing the potatoes in with the meat, but because I have some diced and some sliced, I kind of had to do that. So next time around, I'll just dice the potatoes and do one thing. So I have a plate and a cora next to me <laughs> and I just cut a circle with the plate set it aside and then I'm gonna move the excess dough from around the circle and then they say load it up with a lot of this meat but my heart's kind of trembling because this meat is little bit put the potatoes with some diced butter and then we're gonna try to close it and crimp for the first time okay now I'm running into a problem here because one, it's too full and two, there's water oozing out of it and I know the meat doesn't have excess water. So I'm thinking it's the potatoes because it was sitting in that water. We're going to have to pat those dry with a paper towel on the other one. But let me try to crimp this one to get it out the way. Let me just pick it up because it's starting to get real slippery. Just close this one. This one's a bust. We're going to get it right on the second one. So put it here on a parchment lined baking sheet with some flour on the parchment paper. Look, see, I'm getting better at the crimping. And this is my dough. 
stick the fork in it like this to vent it and then jada became a pro because she re-seasoned the meat with some other stuff on it and we got five we used chef john's dough for three and my dough for two and i'm gonna put this strawberry and stuff in one part just to do it the way they used to do it back in the day so one hour and 20 minutes later it is done let's get this one out we're gonna allow this all to cool down then we're gonna taste well, they said the miners, because this crusty part is supposed to look better and thicker than mine. But, you know, we're getting used to it. This, um, they held it here with their grubby hands, and then they ate the pastry, and that's why they had, like, the fruit on the one end for their dessert. Then they would throw away that part. Why? Because their hands are What's covered in... It's covered in soot? You know, I think my ancestors worked in the coal mine. That's why I have that rare deficiency, that enzyme deficiency. Come closer. Ooh. Oh. Oh. Okay. That's good. Now, when we make this again, you know we're going to put a lot of stuff in it, right? Oh, yeah. Onions, bell peppers, jalapeno. Oh, my God. Just the sky's the limit. Watch. It's nicely cooked on the inside. Mm. This is my dough. Good okay, night. Mm hmm. So I already knew what my dough was going to taste like, right? Cut the shit in half, right? Yeah. Get out of here. You're not part of the show. <laughs> the jam, the strawberry and the jam went into the whole thing. <laughs> Joshua wants to barf. When this cools down, I'll taste it. I'm not afraid. I like sweet and sour stuff. So this part's the fruit part. And I didn't put a whole lot of jam because I wanted to make it not melt like this. So I put the strawberry, right? I'll taste this, but it's too hot for me to taste right now. But, oh, I wanted, do you guys mind? Okay, I'll, I'll try the end of this dough, okay? So as you can see from the video on the left, I don't like the one with the fruit in it. It was just nasty to look at, nasty to taste. The meat doesn't go well with the fruit at all. And then I don't like chef john doe because it was kind of tough and tasteless to be honest <laughs> so i'm just gonna stick with my dough with all the fat all the butter all the shortening child and cora wants some so badly oh remember the other one that i messed up from chef john when i put too little flour well it turned out to be that it was kind of like halving my recipe because now the fat finally matches the flour and it actually came out good with some roast beef that we had leftovers remember guys we're not buying this book Pick up a copy of this book instead. Beans and Rice Volume 2 is the only Belizean cookbook backed by The Bear Pantry Show. Take a look at all these wonderful recipes you'll find inside the pages. Not interested in Belizean dishes? Then the pantry laid bare with these better than restaurant quality comfort foods might be the perfect book for you. Only need a small batch or a meal for two? Then pick up a copy of No More Leftovers. Each book has many choices of delicious dishes from basic ingredients.